is in operation, labor should not be mentioned. Because grace, we say, is an impute of God into man to enable man to have the capacity of God. That is, what makes us to function like God is grace imputed into us by God. Then if you have received the ability of God, why then must we labor to become what God wants us to be? And I said to us last week, that though we may be talking about grace, but labor is required to bring into manifestation, into operation, the effect of the grace of God in our lives. And we look at the component of diligence when being added as a force to the grace of God, what it makes a life of man to become. And we read in scriptures from Corinthians where Paul was saying, Though it was the least of all the apostles, but he is what he is by the grace of God. Please, can they own two fans? Let's manage because the eat will be too much. Just own this fan and this fan. Otherwise, let me preach without microphone. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So today, our text will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. And I trust God within about 20, 25 minutes, I'll be able to share the body in my heart and we close because of the issues we're having with power. Verse 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Say, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in a game goes into street training. Some version says goes into discipline. They do this to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. It is by the grace of God you are chosen and selected to be part of those running for reward. The Bible says that many are called but few are chosen. To be qualified to compete in a race for reward is a measure of grace and not a measure of merit. For the fact that you were counted among the elect of God to find yourself in the kingdom of God to labor for reward is a grace in itself. And many desire so much to be accounted as one that is worthy to labor with God. But yet, the merit is not administered to them. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. He said, we stand by faith in the grace of God. It is by the grace of God, you are on this ground upon which you stand. But Paul was bringing a dimension to us this morning. He says, see, many are called to run in a race. But it is not all that win the prize. So everybody runs for what? The prize. He said, therefore, run so that you are able to what? Win the prize. Hard labor to the race. Do something extra beyond what you have received free of charge. So that the qualification for a price can become a reality and you will not be disqualified at the end of the day. And the, under this series this morning, I want to speak about the subject self-discipline. I call it the constraint that fine tunes a life for success. Self-discipline. The constraint that fine tunes a life for success. Self-discipline. The self-imposed constraints 
that fine tunes a life for success. It is possible for a man to be graced and endowed with the grace of God and yet is disqualified from grace. Samson, in the book of Judges chapter 16, was a man, the Bible says, that was graced from the womb. A word of prophecy went ahead before he even saw the light of life. And God said, he's going to be a strong man. I'm going to use him mightily to conquer the kings of Philistines. And when he was born, the spirit of God began to move over him. It was evident and apparent that this was not an ordinary man. This was an unusual man. A man that could, that could with his hands carry the gate of a city on his shoulder. A man that could with his bare hands kill a lion. A man that could with his bare hands kill the 300 Philistines and took their first kings at a bright price. A man that could with one job bone of a horse kill 1,000 soldiers was not an ordinary man. He was a man of great grace. Like many of us, a man of great potential. A man of great destiny before men. But we saw what lack of discipline brought his life into. If you read verse 21 of Judges chapter 16, you saw what indiscipline reduced a man of grace to. A man that does not have this constraint that will fine tune his life to succeed in the purpose of God can be reduced to a piece of bread. A man that is so anointed to the teeth can be reduced to such that will become a comedian before the people. Samson, a great man, a man that did exploit for God, became a comedian, became an entertainer before his enemies. I pray that your life will not reduce your life to comedy. Before your enemies, you will not grind for their fun. Indiscipline is an affliction upon a destiny. There are many people that even Babalawa will tell them, but you see them as stout in motor parks. Indiscipline. Lack of self-discipline. It is the force of discipline that fine-tunes a life of success. It is the force of discipline that narrows a man to succeed in life. That is why when after you have gone for training and you have gone to school and they want to ask you what to do, what do they ask you? What is your feed of discipline? That is, how have you disciplined yourself to merit this status? What have you done that we can put you in charge of this school, in charge of this organization? What is your discipline? And you tell them that I have a master's degree in um, biochemical science. And they say, okay, this is what you are looking for. Professing a capacity is one thing. But subjecting to yourself to a process that will prepare you for that capacity is another. And that's what discipline is all about. Excuse me. God, the Bible says that does not show favoritism. <laughs> At times, there will be football matches between Nigeria and some other countries. And many people will go into prayer. Lord, make Nigeria win. And even if some prophet will come on the pulpit, prophesying who will win the match. God does not get involved in what, whatever concerns the will of man. Whatever he has given man power to work out, it does not get involved. It does not determine the outcome anymore. Otherwise, it will be unjust and unfair. How can two of you, my son and another person, want to compete in a race? And because I love my son, I now carry him and I put him in front of somebody that has been rehearsing, that has been jogging for years to win that race. God is not unjust. The Bible says that God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall what? Reap. He that subjects himself to a process of discipline shall through discipline reap success in life. He that shown discipline and gave himself hope to reckless living we of it live a reckless life. The difference between you and others 
that you envy is that they have applied themselves to a process of destiny. What you call favor is a life that have subjected themselves to discipline. God did not favor Jesus um, because he was the son of God. The Bible says that the boy Jesus grew. What's the meaning of growth? Process. The boy Jesus grew in stature and he won favor with God and man. Discipline will cause you to win favor in this life. I'm going somewhere this morning. I see many people that pray for success. They pray for a better life. And they are the set of indisciplined people I've ever seen in my life. In fact, their life irritates me because of indiscipline. What is self-discipline? Self-discipline is the ability to trim your excesses in order to possess your goals. The ability, self inbuilt ability to trim your excesses, your floppy, floppy disposition so that you can realize your goal. I say the process of pruning and trimming is not easy. It involves pain. It involves endurance. But yet, the ability to endure, to possess is discipline. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. He said, because of the goal of joy that was set before him, he what? Endure the cross. He despised the shame. Jesus subjected himself to the discipline of the cross. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. said, after he has disciplined himself by dying on the cross, what did the Bible say happened? He said, therefore, God highly what? Exalted him. You are looking for exhortation? Please subject yourself to death. Discipline is killing a part of you that wants to hinder you from possessing your goal. Did you hear that definition of discipline? Discipline is what? Killing a part of you that will not allow you to possess your goal. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. It said, Put to death, therefore, your members. <laughs> that is what scripture is recommending. If you want to possess the goal of heaven. If heaven is your goal and the kingdom of God is your objective and you are in chase of that, it said kill yourself. Colossians chapter, chapter 5. Chapter 3 verse 5. It said put to death therefore your members. Whatever is in you that will betray you to the world in order for you not to become God's best, it said kill it. And that's what discipline is all about. Discipline is a personal affliction inflicted on yourself to guarantee God's best for your life. Look at what Paul was saying in verse 27. Let me read from verse 26 of First Corinthians 9. He said, Therefore, I do not run like somebody running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. He said, I strike myself with a blow. <laughs> is that in your Bible? Who can get us another version of the Bible apart from what I just read? Some version says, I beat my body. Who can give me another version that's different from what I'm mentioning? Eh? Any other version? Verse 27. Eh? He said, I discipline my body. I need a simpler version. Good news. Eh? I do what? I do what? I said, I bring my body into subjection. Discipline is a personal inflicted affliction to guarantee your success. Difficult, discipline, I mean, is to narrow your perspective in order to maintain the required consistency to win. To narrow what? your perspective to maintain the required consistency. See, there's a consistency rule to every success in life. Hear that and store it somewhere. Success does not happen by accident. If God will make a nation or a person to succeed, he will give them a consistency rule. That is what is called laws and commands of God. 
And Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this book of the law that has the consistent rules of God for success will not depart from my mouth. I will what? Meditate on it day and night so that I can observe to do what is written therein so that it can by so it can make my way prosperous and I can have what? Good success. So discipline is to narrow your focus, to narrow your perspective in order for you to maintain the consistency rules that guarantee success. Discipline is cultivating the habit that leads us to a life that pleases God. Discipline will help you to cultivate some habits that becomes a routine, a lifestyle that will help you to please God. Without discipline, we cannot please God. This involves the process of training ourselves to become godly. The process of training ourselves to qualify. The process of training ourselves to become all God wants us to be. Self-discipline will help you or helps a man to avoid being enslaved to his own desires, appetite, and impulses. It is common to every growing plant to have offshoots. What I mean by offshoot is excessive branches. Life, we have excesses. Every process of production has waste. Are you understand what I'm saying? And most time, if you understand a production process, the waste is actually even greater than the product. Most times. Observe any production process. The byproduct is often in more quantity than the real product. So the excesses that our life produces, at times, if they are not trimmed away or cut off, we becloud the glory of what we are trying to project. So what self-discipline does is that it helps you to prune your desires, tame your appetite, and cut aside the, the impulses that becomes an hindrance in the lives of a man. Quickly, before I tell us the benefit of uh, a life that is disciplined, let me highlight to us quickly from scriptures, dangers of indiscipline. I told us if the grace of God will be of effect in your life, you must labor under the grace of God. Last week, I told us that without diligence, your hands cannot rule. But I'm saying that without discipline, you will armstrong the process of success in your life. You will be the cause of your own ruin without discipline. You will be the source of your own destruction without discipline. Then that's of indiscipline because of time. Number one. Lack of self-discipline will betray you to environmental threats. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28. Lack of self-discipline will expose you to your own ruin. Look at what verse 28 of Proverbs 25 says. It says, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person that lacks discipline. Excuse me. A nation that has no harm. Eh? A bank that has no security office officers. What happens to them? A corn plantation without fence where goats are around. A life that lacks discipline becomes food for events around this life. Lack of self-discipline betrays a man to immediate an environmental calamity and disastrous event. So it is that important. For example, a young girl that lacked the discipline of keeping himself straight and chaste and pure, we become victims of randy guys that has no destination in life. The young girl just realized that a moto, back, a moto packed out impregnated him. A fine girl that is got impregnated by a moto packed out. A boy whose mother is selling codeine. What did that thing? Gin. Dry gin. 
because you lack discipline. You discover that you carry unwanted pregnancy or as a guy, you carry diseases that are not supposed to be part of your frame. I was, I don't know where I was mentioning it. During the week, I was teaching somewhere, I think it was on Friday. That when they mention some sexually transmitted disease, some of the things I think about, how do people even catch this disease? STD, STI, HIV. If you are a disciplined person, or you are the only person you are having sex with is your wife, can you carry STI? Eh? Will you carry STD? Or if I'm walking on the street, I'm, I'm sure you are a nurse. Can I just walk in and STD just fly? Somebody that is not disciplined in his temper will be destroying relationships. It's not like a city without a war is a life that has no discipline. I've seen people that their future is glorious, brilliant people. Their academics are cut short because of indiscipline. My mom used to give us one proverb when we go to school in those days. She said, what is the meaning in English? That a child that does not have mother does not get injured at the back. You know why? Why, why do you think the proverb? Nobody will be able to nurse it. It is only a mother that can have the patient to nurse a wound in your back. I've seen many destiny, many glorious destiny that has been cut short because they don't have this. And I've seen life cut short for lack of indiscipline. So, the first danger of indiscipline is that it betrays you to what? Your environment. Number two, indiscipline will incapacitate and deactivate your ability to be useful to yourself. Indiscipline will render you useless to yourself. Render you useless to God and makes you irresponsible in life. For example, some of us lack work discipline. You cannot stay in a place and work. You don't know that subjecting yourself to the routine of work is discipline and you desire success. How do you want to succeed without work? How will God prosper you without labor? He says, I will bless the work of your hand and you come here drinking anointing oil every day and say, God bless me. God is not a magician. Even a babalawa will not bless you without a work. Look at what Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 to 5 says. It said, lazy hands makes for poverty, but diligent hands brings wealth. He who gather crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. How can you be comfortable as a young man, as a young woman, wake sleeping for 24 hours? They call you in the afternoon, you sleep, you Facebook and you hit. So you will die. In discipline, deactivate your ability to be useful to yourself. And there is no way you can pray from now to tomorrow that God's answers and in discipline. Man. In fact, the recommendation for, of God for a man that lacks the discipline of a routine engagement is that he should not eat. So he that does not walk should not eat. It. God has promised all this month that is a month that hidden treasures will be uncovered to possess. Excuse me, it's not for idle people. If you are there, you pray that prayer, you are idle. Please don't pray it because it will not work for you. If you don't have a place of engagement, if you don't have a business, if you don't have something you can operate for God to bless, please, some prayers don't get answered until you do the right thing. Because as a pastor, I've been frustrated over the lives of many people. There are many people you even want to help. And you even invest in their lives. But for lack of proper work ethics, they make clean of investment. Some people are just lazy in their disposition. Give them one millionaire to start a business. They'll come and tell you one thousand and one reason why the business did not work. But give some 20,000 to start selling sweets. By the time you see them a year's time, they have started selling sweets in packs because they have understanding.
They know what, you know why some people that you help, they don't appreciate it? Because they don't, they are not disciplined. Anybody that you give a thousand naira that appreciates you, that knows the value of one thousand, is somebody that knows that it takes work to make money. You give some people hundred thousand naira, they are five hundred thousand, what happens to hundred thousand, but enough for me. During the week, somebody came to see me last week. And I struggled. There was no money in my hands. I struggled to send about 35% or 40% of what they asked for to, to her. It was only thank you, sir. Emoji. Thank you, thank you, thank you that he sent to me. But before I sent the money, he asked credit to call me almost every day. Are you understand what I'm saying? What is simply more was that out of 100,000, you got 40,000. It doesn't make sense to you. And that 40,000 pained me from my marrow. It was not easy for me to deliver. But because I promised and I struggled to keep my words when I keep it, he has not called. Before, he can call me three times a day. But now, he just send me three, thank you, thank you, thank you. Was the emoji he used to ask for the money? Not even a message. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. When he was asking me for help, it was not emoji. We saw physically. But now it's emoji. I'm not, I've been reduced to emoji. People that value work, people that are disciplined, they understand, they appreciate favor. Lack of discipline, number what is that? Number three, lack of discipline is an open and self inflicted invitation to failure. The only way you pray to fail is when you are in discipline. Look at verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 9. The fear of Paul was that he will be disqualified. He will fail. It is not a, it's not a subject of demon or devil being responsible. You will fail if you don't discipline yourself. Some of us, we are enslaved to our appetite. Some of us, let them just know what can, you know, tempt us. And they parade it before us. We'll be led as like a goat. They want to go and kill in our battle. An open invitation to failure is a life of indiscipline. Everybody can badge on you. You are available anytime. When can we see tomorrow? Anytime. I know that you are a very indisciplined person. That means you have no schedule. No routine. When can I call you? Anytime. When can we go there tomorrow? Anytime. But when can I see you, sir? But I won't be available between this and this because I know I value you. But anytime, they don't even need to call you. Go, 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 go. Who goes there? Is that one less? She like who? Are you going to be They can find you anytime, any day. It's It's an open invitation to failure. As a child of God, you must be a model of a disciplined life. A model of a disciplined life. Number four. The danger of indiscipline results to poor time management and limited productivity in life. How do you know an undisciplined fellow? They procrastinate a lot. They squander opportunities. They don't know how to delay gratification. But they can delay productivity. Anything that they have to do, any kind of work they have to engage in, they can delay but put work now down and put enjoyment down. They will say, let me enjoy it first. I will do the work later. Procrastination is a sign of indiscipline. And such people squander favor and lose many opportunities. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. Say, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. My son, do not resent the rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, he disciplines those he delights in. And another scripture proverb says, A little sleep 
a little slumber, a little what? Folding of the hand. Is that what happens? Come upon you like what? An arm robber. As I teach on Tuesday, I'll be touching some of these things because God said, go and break the spirit of poverty in the lives of the people. It's not going to be a prophetic meeting. It's going to be a teaching meeting. Because the spirit of prophecy is not a demon. It is something in us and around us. In discipline, danger, number the last danger of the discipline, it can bring health issues and untimely deaths. In discipline, can do what? Somebody that cannot tame his appetite, that is given to alcohol, will damage his liver at the end of the day, Abby. And I used to have a lawyer that he can drink gin. In, in fact, when he comes to my office then, he'll be smelling gin in his mouth. He died of kidney problem. What killed him? Demo? Family Demo? He's in discipline. Some of us that are not disciplined to trim our circle of friends and we find ourselves in the company of the ungodly. When judgment comes upon the ungodly, what happens to us? We become victim. You are friends with all the Yahoo boys around your house. You are friends with all the prostitutes around your house. Ham robbers are your boyfriends. I gave a proverb on, 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 on Friday that my mom used to tell me when we were growing up that a meji liar was a man soon. It doesn't sound like Yoruba, but it's Yoruba I just spoke. The wife of somebody that was on the high sea have kata twice. The first kata is when he's eating pepper soup that the husband brought when he went on the high sea. Ah, he's eating crayfish. He's eating pepper soup. He will be crying and he will be sumo. But the day the husband goes to the high sea and the ship capsizes and the guy gets drunk and dies, what will he do again? He will have kata too. When he's eating the first one, he says, The other time, That's what it is. If you keep back complaints because you lack discretion and you lack discipline, you will cry twice. There are many people who have gone to prison a lot. There was a guy we met at um, Shagamu prison. In fact, the guy is a pastor of the prisoners. What happened? He said he used to have friends. Then one afternoon, he went to visit one of the friends. Unfortunately for him, those friends has went for robbery and have killed people. So they traced the bike to their house. On Godly afternoon, they met him in the, in the company of his friends. They packed all of them. He has been born again before then. Are you understand what I'm saying? He didn't get born again in prison. He entered prison as a born again Christian found in the wrong company. And you know the protective story? He has been there for like 15 or 17 years when we met him. And he said, the case file, they cannot even find it. So when he will come out, I, the last time I heard from him, he said they have transferred him from Shagamu to Jebode. He's also the pastor there. Excuse me. The scripture cannot be broken. Either you are a prisoner or you are a freed man. God will see the God in your life. He said, when you go through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the fire, if it is in prison, you want to fulfill your ministry, he will be with you there. What is important that you fulfill your ministry? Whether it be in life or in death. And that was why Moses told, to, told the people, he said, I put before you today life and death. Blessing and causes. Make a choice. And at times when we are talking about these issues, some people will think that we are just speaking jargons and nonsense. And most times, people will even fret. You see, you are too small for me to be using to preach. I don't wake up in a day and I think of this brother I'm going to use him and it doesn't happen. If I'm preaching and I use you as a case study, it is because God wants to touch you. And if you turn it to anger, so be it. Yoruba says, What I'm saying is that it is God's design 
that the grace that is available here over this century, this year, to prosper us, to expand, be everybody experiences. Be everybody's, you know, what we all experience. But it's not all about prayer. We have an engagement. We have an input. And the first input I mentioned is diligent. The second one is what? Discipline. There are some levels of operation I cannot get to as your pastor unless I subject myself to certain discipline. And I'm doing it every day. Paul said, I beat myself. Is it easy to beat yourself? Have you seen somebody calling again and beating himself before? If you see me blowing my stomach now, what will you say? Pastor Tia Wiri. But that is what he said he did. So that I can win the prize. We read scripture last week. He said, I am the least of all the apostles. But the grace of God upon my life was not in vain because what? I labor more than them all. The quality of distinction upon a life is the yoke of discipline. Rise to your feet and let's begin to pray. And that is your prayer this morning. Lord, put upon me the yoke of discipline. I've said many words. I've said many things. I think I will preach a part two because I didn't finish my notes. I just took our time. That Lord, yoke me with discipline. Bring me into discipline that will bring, you know, your glory out of my life. Yoke my life with discipline. Save me from the path of destruction for lack of discipline. Many of you, you are wasting away. You are still young. You are in your early 20s. Excuse me, you realize I'm